All right, guys, welcome to Ashes of Creation. Um, where we're at right now is a little camp called Morrow's Mead. Uh, this camp wants to become bigger than a camp, better than a camp, but it's having a hard time doing that because all of its caravans disappear on in transit. Um, we got to figure out why they're disappearing. Um, Sergeant Landry has a good idea in how we can prevent that or how we can make that possible. Um, so he set up a decoy caravan that we're going to escort um, through the canyon to discover what's happening to these 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 caravans. Um, we can talk to Sergeant Landry by right clicking on him. He'll give us a little bit of background on what's going on there. You notice he talks a little bit about mushrooms. Um, the mushrooms that are native to this area uh, kind of keep at bay some of the more awful, corruptive kind of things in this area. Um, because they're native, they have immunity, and they'll help us stay immune too. So after you're done talking with him, come and, come and follow me, and we'll go and pick up some of those mushrooms. So down in this little cavern, we'll find the mushrooms. On the nine key, you'll see the harvest skill. If you hit nine, you'll get a little reticle, and it'll be green when you hover over the mushrooms and red when you have no mushrooms available. Um, if you click down and then hit the nine key while it's in that little red area, um, you could actually crit um, your, uh, your harvest. And what that means is that you'll get more mushrooms or you'll get better mushrooms or other better, cooler, secret things will happen. Um, okay, cool. Um, looks like uh, all of that experience that you've gained from harvesting those mushrooms um, has helped the node level up to uh, level three. Uh, that means it becomes a village, so it's no longer a small little camp. It's an awesome big village bustling with people. That means there are more quests available, more resources available, more amenities available. Um, the nodes are always listening to what the players are doing and uh, they grow and shrink with, uh, with, with player activity. This is how we keep the game kind of dynamic and um, always new. Every time you log in, something's going to be different, something's going to change, and it's going to keep things fresh every day, day in, day out. Uh, the caravans that we are escorting right now are empty, um, but normally they're going to have a lot of resources on them. Caravans are the main way that we transport goods from one place to another. Um, they can represent trade routes. They can represent you just moving a whole bunch of resources from one place to another. Um, our economy is a local economy. Um, this means that we don't have things like a global auction house or a global banking system. If you want to move goods from one place to another, you need to do it with a caravan. Caravans are mobile PVP hotspots. Uh, that means that, that if someone wants to take your caravan, wants to take your goods, um, they can do that here by, by attacking you. Um, it's, it's your prerogative to kind of bring a good running crew with you or take uh, hidden circuitous routes um, to try and avoid those confrontations. We'll see here our first encounter is with a Slateboard Shaman. This is where we'll get used to our combat abilities. Um, your number one key is your combo ability. It functions really similarly to how the harvesting system works. Hang on, I'm gonna have to help heal here. This 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 encounter gets pretty tough. If we can make it through without any death, we've done really well. Now, as you use your combo abilities, you'll be building a resource called Focus. In the lower left-hand corner of your screen, um, you'll see a little uh, kind of black button. It might be green. Um, that represents how much focus you have. If it's green, that means you can use, you can spend that focus on your ultimate ability. Um, your ultimate ability is kind of this super-powered, um, super-effective kind of ability that will change uh, the dynamics of, of an encounter. Uh-oh, we've lost our press fellow. We're going to go ahead and raise him up. We've lost both of our tanks. I'm trying to bring them back as soon as possible. There we go. And it looks like everybody's cleaned up things nicely. So here we have two options. We can go forward or we can go left. 
Um, Ranger, if you take a look at your number eight key, you'll see that it's labeled track. Uh, this ability will reveal um, tracks that are around here. We might be able to follow the Slateborn wherever they are if you use that ability. We're looking around. I see some tracks over here to our left. So it looks like the Slateborn footprints lead into the canyon. Um, this is kind of an example of how we want to use the environment as a character. We want to use the environment to help tell stories. Um, we don't want it to be just kind of a background noise. We want it to be something that is meaningful and then has, um, has secrets to reveal. Every class has these utility abilities, and every class uses their utility abilities in different ways. Uh, the ranger is focused on being outdoors. They are good survivors, and so they, they track. Um, our other classes will uh, have examples of their abilities further on down the road. And because they're different abilities, it's going to kind of change the way that you want to build your parties. Um, different, different encounters are going to rely on different utilities. Um, Mage might help you get through uh, one part of the environment uh, in a way that you wouldn't be able to without a mage in your party. Well done, we're cleaning up these guys well. Uh, we've got another fork in the road, so if the ranger wants to use his track ability again, we might get some indication on where we need to go. And it looks like down the hill. The ranger is on top of things today. Now these Slateborn, you can see that they're kind of bird-like. Uh, at one point, uh, a long time ago, these used to be beautiful peacock-like creatures with uh, multicolored plumage, wings that actually work, um, and a uh, civilized, uh, well-built, advanced society. Um, something happened to them to cause this, this weird, twisted corruption of, of their uh, initial beauty, um, and maybe we'll be able to figure out what that is. So we can see there's a lot of Slade-born activity down here at the bottom of this hill. Let's hold up for a second. Um, across this river, um, they must have gone, but down there is a bunch of poison water. Um, it's probably a good idea that we avoid that, and we need to figure out what, how these guys got across it. So if the mage wouldn't mind using their utility ability, also assigned to number eight, reveal magic. There we go. And maybe we can see something that might have otherwise been hidden, and there we go. So we can see that the Slateborn had an illusion spell on this, and the uh, mage was able to reveal that to the party. Um, if we didn't have a mage in our party, we would have had to figure out a different way across. Uh-oh, our cleric has fallen in the water. She'll find out that the, uh, the water isn't actually that dangerous right now. We didn't want to kill people unnecessarily. Come on, cleric, over here. Awesome work. So part of this is just trying to figure out like interesting ways that people can uh, can traverse this terrain. Different parties will do things in different ways. Uh oh, it looks like we have encountered our first bug. Um, there we go. Cleric, um, this is your turn to shine. Let's go ahead and uh, use your cleanse ability. Now, without that, we'd have to figure out some other way of surviving that toxic cloud, but thankfully we had a cleric in the party, and they could cleanse it. The cleric's really good at taking care of poisons and curses. And if we continue on and hold up right here, the tank has uh, an ability called Perception on their number 8 key. If they want to use that right now... Uh, we'll see that at the bottom of these uh, these waterfalls over here, there's there's kind of like a bright shining circle. That's going to tell us where our next encounter is going to come from, and that allows the tank to kind of figure out the best positioning for their party and help to protect and anticipate where they're going to come from. So if we come down here, we can be pretty sure that we're going to get ambushed from those things, but it's no longer an ambush because we are ready for it. That's a good idea to stick together on this encounter. It's a pretty tough one. 
The mage is going to want to take out all their AoE abilities uh, for as long as they'll support us. And the cleric's going to be on their game. Here comes even more of them. Doing much better on this fight, even though it's a much harder fight. Everybody seems to have gotten their footing. Awesome work, everybody. That encounter kills more people uh, than I can count, uh, and we did it without a scratch, so well done. Uh, let's finish healing up here. All right, I think we're ready to go. Now, don't forget about your ultimates here. Um, I am on the case. I've got Michael Bacon with me. He is filming our... <laughs> we are uh, continuing deeper and deeper into this volcano. Although to me it looks less and less like a volcano and more and more like something entirely else. And that looks ominous to me. The Unreal Engine is an amazing thing. We're able to kind of leverage it to do a lot of really cool stuff and maintain a 60 FPS frame rate. And oh, here we see something new. This guy looks mean. And you know what? I'll bet you he's the cause of all this. Sorrow's Hunger. Sorrow's Hunger has come to meet the party. Now this guy's a boss, so he's going to be a lot tougher than a lot of those Slaveborn that we found before. The tank's going to want to use their taunt ability to kind of grab and hold aggro. And this is a great place to generate lots of focus and to use your ultimates. This guy has a really nasty breath attack something to watch out for to make sure you move out of the way of. Awesome hail of arrows there. That's an ultimate that does a lot of damage and has a little bit of control associated with it. Doing well guys, we're down about 40%. Uh, Oh, and there's that breath attack. Watch out, mage. That's gonna hurt. Tank is back in the fight. Where is this guy going? Oh, uh, now he's gonna use his ultimate. That means things are gonna get pretty mean real quick. Uh, one of the tanks are going to want to pull this guy out of his smoke because he has uh, increased evasion while he's in it. And we'll all be taking damage. Awesome work getting out of the, the breath press.
Getting there, he's down to 30%. And he's gonna use his ultimate again. Let's get him out of that cloud real quick. Awesome work, Fred. We're getting real close to putting him down. Let's put the pressure on him. 8% left. Oh, and yet another ultimate. Thankfully, our press tank is on the job. work guys we have saved Maro's mead for another day and that is the end of our demo thanks for playing everybody we really appreciate you coming out